the university um, has just adopted a new executive policy on sustainability, and this follows on the heels of the Board of Regents embracing sustainability as a core aspect of the mission of the University of Hawaii last year. In our new executive policy on sustainability, we move forward onto the implementation. What do we actually have to do when we talk about becoming more sustainable? And we're doing that by looking at several areas. One is, of course, operations. That is, how do we make the operations of the university across our 10 campuses and education centers on six islands more sustainable in terms of energy consumption, um, utility use, water use, uh, local food, and, and a range of activities. Um, a second area is the work we're doing across the curriculum. How do we work with our students and faculty to make sure sustainability is baked into the curriculum for students through perhaps things like designating S courses for sustainability related courses just as now we have WI for writing intensive courses. And we want to do that as a university system um, looking at how courses will flow uh, from community colleges into our four-year campuses and potentially looking at future degree programs as well. Uh, third area is the way we look at our um, outreach into the community and our engagement with the community. And then we're also looking at how we um, incorporate um, traditional practices and indigenous values um, here in Hawaii into the, our work with sustainability. So another area that we're looking at is scholarship, and that is the way our uh, university faculty pursue research agendas and work with our students to advance knowledge and understanding of sustainability across all its many dimensions. So for me, I think it means that every time we're making a decision about anything, um, we embrace considerations of sustainability as part of the decision-making process. So, for example, there's a tradition in government, uh, particularly in Hawaii, of low bid, meaning we buy everything at the lowest possible cost. And that favors immediacy over long-term future. And when I think about sustainability, it really means thinking about the future. And part of that means every once in a while you might have to spend a penny, a nickel, or a dollar more in order to benefit the future, um, both financially, but also in terms of livability and consideration for the lives of those who will follow us. Our first commitment is really to our work in Hawaii, and that's educating our students and advancing knowledge um, with our faculty and students working together, engaging with the community, and setting an example through our practices for the rest of the state. Uh, moving beyond, I think um, Hawaii has some interesting advantages. Um, much of our sustainability agenda has been driven by our students, and that's fabulous. I think it's an example we can share with other organizations. Um, I think our um, um, being an island state, I think we have considerations of sustainability that other places don't really um, think of themselves as having to be as self-sufficient as we need to um, when we think about sustainability for Hawaii. And I think that's something we can share. And lastly, I think the way we incorporate um, traditional practices and um, Ike Hawaii, the, the knowledge of those who came before us, into our understanding of how to create a more sustainable Hawaii, I think that's part of what we can do for the world. And um, the Malama Honua voyage is a great example of where we in Hawaii can share our ideas, wisdom, and practices with the world. What would be different? I think um, a big part of it is probably the way we think about the world and our interaction with the world. Um, sure, I'd like to drive down the cost of energy, but you know that's hard to do in the short term. Um, like to have more local food, hard to do in the short term right now, but I think creating those opportunities so that we and everyone can uh, embrace more sustainable, sustainable practices and um, create a cleaner, more positive and better future for um, everyone here. I think there is the political will to say we will. Um, I think what will be interesting is, is as we start facing hard choices, whether that political will, rem will remain. And I'd like to think so. I'm an optimist at heart. The challenge is, is common to any time um, we, we are advocating for change, that um, 
in this area, you know, energy, food, anything. Um, anytime we want to change something, um, there is a perception of winners and losers. And um, the potential losers will advocate for the status quo. And I think what we have to do is um, do our best, and, and it's not always possible, to, but try to create win-win scenarios whenever possible so that those who are um, being brought along for a change they didn't favor or advocate for, um, that they're not harmed by it. And, um, but I think ultimately, you know, change has to occur and we have to be persistent and relentless about doing what's best for the future as well as the, the present. Uh, well, UH is absolutely committed to um, establishing metrics and tracking ourselves and um, making changes if we find that we're not making progress. In fact, within our executive policy, um, we made a strong commitment to um, developing uh, metrics and uh, positioning ourselves to be able to collect data so that we're able to track our progress toward those mechanisms. So that's some basic things like um, setting up energy metering for every building on every campus. Um, uh, we've set aggressive targets for both renewables and moving toward um, complete carbon neutrality over the next several decades. And um, um, we're, we're tend to be data-driven across our mission, and this will be no exception, exception where we'll be tracking our numbers um, ac across our progress as we move forward. So we'll look forward to integrating with the Aloha Plus Challenge and the numbers and targets established across the state.